This is lesson number seven titled the gymnosperms. In class today you had a lab in which you dissected a pine cone and um, some of you were fortunate enough to be able to see an actual seed um, that was inside the pine cone and when you looked at it you noticed that it had kind of this helicopter uh, type of look to it where the seed was on the inside and it had a helicopter that would help to ease it down. Um, and I took a couple of pictures while students were working and it was fun to, to actually see you getting your hands dirty and actually working with um, different types of uh, pine cones. And so the goal of the, the lab or the task that was at hand was basically for you to be able to um, look at the way that reproduction occurs in gymnosperms. And that was our actual lab that we were asking you to do. And so um, we're going to go through some of the notes to give you some of the key background and information. And then uh, at the very end, I will share with you what you should have put down on your whiteboard for an answer as to how gymnosperms uh, reproduce. So to start with the notes, um, we need to establish what are gymnosperms. So what are gymnosperms? And gymnosperms are, I'm going to put around a little circle to help you know that that's a vocab word. It's a seed plant that produces naked seeds. And what we mean by the term naked is the fact that they have no fruit to protect them. And when we get into the angiosperm section, you're going to discover that apples and oranges and lemons, they all have a fruit that's protecting the seed. Um, the gymnosperms do not, and so oftentimes we refer to them as being naked. Now, along with being naked, um, there are some characteristics that all gymnosperms share. Um, so aside from them having naked seeds, they also have uh, scale-like leaves. Oftentimes these are, are uh, a lot more um, sharper, um, they're thicker, and so they refer to them as being scale-like. And they also have a deep growing root system. And so these characteristic characteristics all fit together for the different types of gymnosperms. Now, um, I pulled up some pictures of different types of gymnosperms. Um, the first one is called a cycad, and that's this one right there. And oftentimes they look like palm trees. So they have a very tropical feel to them and they are actually located in tropical areas. Okay, so the cycads are found in tropical areas. They oftentimes look like palm trees. Um, the one over here, this one should look extremely familiar to you, and that's because of the fact that it is a conifer. And the word conifer uh, kind of sounds like cone, if there was an E in there, um, and the reason for that is because it's cone bearing plant, which means that it produces cones. And um, these are the most diverse, so they are the most diverse of all of the uh, gymnosperms. And they keep their needles year round. So this one, um, if we go out in the dead of winter, we would still see that they have their needles. Uh, the one down here, this one is called a ginkos. Um, this is the oldest of all the gymnosperms. 
it's oftentimes uh, used as a decorative type of tree. So it's oftentimes like on uh, city streets, um, they use it to kind of make uh, it look nice for an area. They're very pretty trees. Um, and the one that's down here at the bottom, this one is called a neophyte. And a neophyte is kind of like a shrub, very low growing or like a vine. And these ones are found in hot desert areas. So when we talk about gymnosperms, there's basically four different groups. There is the group that is known as the cycad, there is the group that's known as the conifers, there's the group that's known as the ginkgos, and there is the group that's known as the neophytes. So two C's and two G's, cycad, conifers, ginkgos, and neophytes. Now, in the lab, um, we Ultimately, we're trying to figure out how conifers reproduce. And it's important to understand because of the fact that this is their way to continue on their production. And so when we start looking at them, um, there is going to be the first step. And the first step is that you have a tree, just like we have outside. There's white pines, there's some blue spruces that are out there, and on there, um, some of the cones are males and there are some that are females. And so the ones that uh, are cones that produce um, the, the males, they are going to produce pollen. So we'll say that there is some male cones, pine cones, and there are also some that are female pine cones. And so these guys develop, um, as you'll see later on, uh, based on their sex of either being males or females. And so what happens is that, we'll say 1A, uh, male cones produce pollen grains. So the male cone produces pollen grains. while we'll say 1B, or I guess we should say this is 2A and 2B because this was our first step. So 2B, the female has an ovule on it. And so this is important because what's gonna end up happening in step number three um, over time, two eggs cells uh, are going to form inside each ovule. And what's going to happen with that? is the fact that step number four, um, the wind is going to scatter pollen grains and some of them are going to become trapped in this sticky substance Um, produced by the ovule. And um, what's going to happen then is that you're going to start to see the ovule uh, close and pollen is going to fertilize the egg. And when that happens, um, this is step number five, step number six is going to be that the ovule is going to develop a seed. And once that seed occurs, it's going to need the wind to disperse 
the pine seed. And that's going to grow into a seedling, which is going to eventually then start to produce, as it gets bigger, it's going to start to produce male and female cones. And again, keep in mind that these male and female cones, this one is the one that's producing the sperm, um, which is going to be the pollen, and the female is going to produce the eggs. And as these two uh, end up meeting up, um, over time what's going to happen is that it's going to um, fertilize it. And so the wind blows and the pollen begins to uh, get trapped on the sticky substance that's produced by the ovule. And the ovule is going to um, close with the pollen. It's going to fertilize that egg and then um, that seed is going to start to develop. And as that seed starts to develop, um, then it's going to need to be dispersed to the ground and it does that through wind, which you could see inside the pine cone that it had a little helicopter that helped it to ease into its landing. And then again, that will hopefully grow into a new type of tree. So imagine uh, like a white pine tree and um, they're going to start to produce these male cones and female cones. The male cones are going to have the pollen. The female is going to have the ovule and the eggs. And over time, what's going to happen is that there's going to be two egg cells that are going to form inside the ovule. And uh, as the wind begins to blow, it's going to blow these male sperm or pollen um, all around. And some of them are going to get trapped onto uh, the ovule, which has a sticky substance that's produced. And eventually what's going to happen is that the ovule is going to close and with it on the inside of that closure is going to be the pollen and it's going to fertilize the egg. As the egg becomes fertilized, it's going to develop the seed. The seed has to get out of the pine cone and it does that through wind, falls to the ground, hopefully it grows. And this cycle continues over and over and over again. Um, and so that's how gymnosperms reproduce. Now, the last thing that I want you to be aware of is that we use gymnosperms all around us. So uh, gymnosperms are used every day in life by making paper and lumber and all kinds of other paper products. So not only are these guys important for their own reproduction, we as humans use gymnosperms all the time. And we use them as paper, we use them for lumber to build houses, and we use them for other types of paper products. So go ahead, fill out the uh, form, let me know what things that you understood, and let me know what things that you struggle to understand, and we can talk about them in class tomorrow. Thanks, and we'll talk to you later.